All right, um, I'm gonna need some help. <laughs> I've been trying to measure the speed of scope probes, which I thought would be an easy thing to do, and it is not. Uh, so, let me tell you what I've done, and I'll show you my best results, and you can help me determine what the heck is going on, because I don't understand it. Um, so, I built this little pulser uh, a while ago. This is the one that uses, um, uh, this uses, what kind of logic? Uh, 74... Uh, AC, 74 AC. So this is a 74 AC 14 Schmidt trigger and it's it, the first uh, inverter does the oscillation and then you wire a bunch of other ones in, in uh, parallel. They all have their own drive resistor and it comes out here on the BNC. So um, I said, okay, well, this is going to be fast enough. You know, it's, it's in a couple, couple pico, picosecond range, a couple of nanosecond range. And uh, so I ran it into the scope and it's running maybe about four and a half nanosecond, uh, four and a half, two and a half, 2.4, like at the very best, 2.4 nanoseconds. And so um, I tried out different probes. I tried out a 350 megahertz probe. I tried a 500 megahertz probe. I tried a 100 megahertz probe. I tried a 200 megahertz probe, and they all gave exactly the same numbers. So obviously, all of those scope probes are better than this, all right? So I figured, okay, I need a better edge. Okay, so that, that was clear to me. I need, I need a better edge. And so if you search the internet for making sub nanosecond Edges. I need. I need. I need an edge that rises in less than a nanosecond. All right. So peak in the picoseconds somehow, hundreds of picoseconds, right? So everybody points to this one article that was written by Jim Jim Williams ages ago, app note number forty seven, and it talks all about scope probes and speed and blah 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 blah. I have to say I haven't read the whole thing yet. I need. I need to go read it. But I figured, ah, it, piece of cake. I'll I'll do what they did and. A whole bunch of people have done this before. It's been on EEV blog. It's 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 been everywhere. Okay, uh, I don't know if you watch the channel. Um, uh, Kerry Wong, he has uh, built one as well, and and he printed out a nice schematic for his. Okay, so so this is his. So let me describe what it is. It, it, it's a thirty nine oh four transistor. So very very generic transistor, but if you look at this transistor, the base is tied to ground. So there's no way this transistor can ever turn on. Okay, so th remember it's a uh, it's a uh, NPN, right? N, a P, and an N. And this one here is not biased on. So we're only talking about this one diode here. And this diode is is in the reverse direction. It's just not turning on. Okay, and um, and so it's not biased on. So. If you put enough voltage across a 3904, way past its spec, okay, I'm talking 120 volts, okay? You put 120 volts here, this thing will avalanche. Uh, it, 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 will, it will go into its quantum realm and it will send a, a, a conduction through a, uh, anyway, it, it, it breaks down in, in avalanche mode and it happens very, very quickly and it will generate a pulse. It will generate a, a sub nanosecond pulse into 50 ohms, 50 ohms down here. And then it's used up its energy. And so it's coming out of this little 22 picofarad capacitor here. So this little 22 picofarad has to charge back up. And so this, uh, uh, 220k resistor and the 22 puff is a relaxation oscillator and it goes whack a whack a whack a whack a whack whack so this thing this thing pulses and you need to get this thing into its avalanche region which which I said is around a, around 100 120 volts something like that all right and then this is just a, this is where you attach your scope probe okay this is all this is a little ground down here right so yeah maybe zoom up a little bit so you can see the schematic uh, once and for all so that's what we're talking about, right? Very, very simple circuit. All right, so I built one. Here it is. So I made it in uh, dug, dead bug fashion. So I have the uh, uh, the transistor, 50 ohms, blah, 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 blah. Everything's in there, right? 
and then I wound this little coil here, which is where the scope probe goes in. So when you're testing scope probes, you can't you can't use you can't use this thing. There's too much inductance on it. That's that's no good. Okay. So the scope probe is going to go in this hole. As far as I can go, yeah. It's going to go in this hole, and it makes ground connections to this little ring here. So you have you have no inductance, and then it's going to touch the collector of the uh, transistor, and that's as good as you can you can get with a with a scope probe. Okay. So uh, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and put this in here and I'm going to be let me turn the power on all right let's test some scope probes the uh, first one we're going to test is the one that comes with the Rigel and uh, let me read the part number of that it's a PVP 2350 so it's a 350 350 megahertz oscilloscope probe and we will see what it does uh, let me turn it on there we go, we're starting to get a trace. And I'm gonna to try to get the biggest amplitude I can by altering the trigger. And then I'll take a single shot. And that's a good one. All right, so we're gonna have this uh, rise time here. And uh, we are measuring 1.25 nanoseconds. Okay, 1.25 nanoseconds. So let's save that screenshot. Okay, DS1. Okay. Uh, then let's try the HP probe. It's supposed to be a little better in specs. I don't know if it'll do better at this particular measurement or not. I haven't quite figured out what are the correct measurements to be making, but this is what I can do. So this is what I'm doing. <clears throat> All right, let's turn it on. And all right, let's get a maximum that we can get out of that one. About there. Let's try another one. All right, let's let's go with that one. Um, 1.26 nanoseconds, so same. All right, so those two probes measure Measure the same. Let's save that. That's D52, DS2. All right. So both those probes are at 1.25 nanoseconds. Now, we're not measuring the probe all by itself. We're measuring the probe plus the scope itself. The scope is limited at 350 megahertz. So even though it's a 500 megahertz probe, it might be, again, limited by the scope. But we will see. All right, uh, let's see. The next one I want to measure is this one. Let's give it a try. Uh, this is a Tektronix. It is a P, they always start with P, a P2200. So 2200, 2200. Very, very famous probe, I think been around a long time. This is claimed to be a 200 megahertz probe. All right, so let's pop it in the circuit. Let's see how 200 megahertz does. On paper, it's slower. And let's go here. And right about there. Okay, 1.4 nanoseconds. So yes, it is slower. Let's save that one. That's DS3. Right. Okay, so we did that one. Let's do this one. This is a really interesting one. This one is a, this one is very old school. Uh, it is a, uh, P6106, 6106, and this is a very, uh, good probe as well. I believe it's rated at 250 megahertz, if I remember right. It's either 250 or 275. I think it's 250. 
So we'll see how it does. Should be close to the one that we just tested. Close to that one. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's look. Try it out. Okay, it's right about there. One point four nine. One point four nine. So a little bit slower than the other one. About the same. Same category. Um, we'll save this one. This is DS4. All right. All right. I have a lot of probes, obviously. Okay. The next one to test is a really nice tech one. I really like the looks of this one. It's a very interesting one. It's a little bit longer cable length, which is nice sometimes to reach around. Uh, might be two meters. Um, it's a 10 times only. It has no switch. Oh, yeah, I should say that. the Some of these are 10 times only, and some of them are switched. The Rigel one was switched, and none of the other ones were switched. They're all times 10. All right, let's put this in. All right. Oh, there we go. All right, let's stick with that one. And this one is doing 1.3, so a little bit better. 1.3, and this, on paper, this one's slower. This is supposedly only a 100 megahertz uh, scope probe. But in this test, it's doing a little bit better, but it looks very high quality though. I like this one. Um, it's a modern, modern design. All right, what else haven't we tested? Let's test this one. This is the the cheap Chinese one. I have no idea what the specs are on this one. It's not marked. There's no numbers at all on it. <laughs> it is a switched probe though. It is times one times 10. Let's try it out, see what it does. All right. And, oh, it's running a little bit high. So it's uh, not, the, the, the divider, the times 10 divider is not quite right on this one. Um, th yeah, this one's really weird. So this one's measuring 1.2 2 nanoseconds. I, I, I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. Anyway, so I think you can buy these for $6 on AliExpress. I think six bucks, scope probe. <laughs> now, it has a funny ring in it, so, so I don't think that this test is going to say everything, but at least in this test, it's got a very fast rise edge. It's got a weird lump down here. I don't know. Let's say this one. This is DS5. All right. Let's get that here. I've got to make sure I don't mix up all of the grabber things. Let's see. The tech ones are all the same. Tech kind of standardized on that. This goes with the HP one. Put that on. This goes with the Rigel. Clicks on. This is the other. Which one does that one go to? I'm not sure. All right. And I have one more probe. Uh, this is a funny little probe. Uh, Hewlett Packard in the, in the 1980s were building the scope probes that had really, really tiny little bodies. Um, I used, when I was designing it at Hewlett Packard, this is the scope probe I always had on my bench. Uh, it's kind of a love hate thing. They're super tiny, so they're, they're nice, but they're kind of hard to grab onto too, so that, that's kind of a negative, but. Uh, this probe is supposedly a 275 megahertz probe, uh, so it should be doing well. Now, there's no way for me to, oh, for this one, I don't think there's any way for me to easily hook up the ground. I'm going to have to be very careful on this one. Yeah, I can hold it like that. I can hold it like that. 
All right. It's starting to sound like Bob Ross again. All right. Let's see if I can hold that there. Oh man, this is going to be one where I need six hands. Turn this on. Turn this on. Let's see if I can. Yeah, there's. There's the, oh man, this one's acting really weird. The ground reference level is not right. I am not, I am not getting a good ground. There we go. We're not getting a good ground. There, let's grab one of these. All right. 1.2 nanos, 1.24 nanoseconds. So very, very nice. It still has a lump there too. I guess maybe that lump's okay. So it's a very fast probe. That's good. Um... And let's save this one. Did I? I don't. Hopefully, I didn't save the other one. Anyway, this one is DS6. Yeah. Uh, wow. So, what did we learn? <laughs> I learned something today. Um, I learned that the probes that come with the Rigol are very, very good probes. Uh, quite impressed with those. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, I need a better pulser, and I'm working on that. Uh, a friend of mine claims to have a eight nanosecond edge <laughs> on the stuff that he works for, for his company. Uh, he does terabit fiber optic stuff and he has the ability to make an eight nanosecond edge. Unfortunately, it might be a trade secret. Um, and uh, I might not be able to get one of those. Um, there might be a possibility that we have to do a field trip um, and I can use it, but he has to have his hands on it at all times. Um, so we will see. Uh, he's, he's in the process though of trying to find me something. If I can get something below 500 picoseconds of rise time, I think I can do all of these measurements. It'd be nice to have something around 100 pico, picoseconds. I don't need eight picoseconds, but... Um, yeah, something around 100 picoseconds, I think, would be good. Um, I really don't know what the bandwidth of the scope's going to be uh, all by itself, how much that introduces it. Um, I know that uh, some of the specifications of these oscilloscopes uh, talk about when using this probe with this oscilloscope, you will get a bandwidth of 275. And that's the way they spec the probe. Then they spec the probe uh, 275. So the, the probe is probably way better than 275, but in the application, since you really don't care, you, what you care about, I buy both of them and I, and I get a certain bandwidth. That's the way they used to spec them. So yeah, so all of this is a bit funny. But anyway, that's what I've got so far. <laughs>